Hi, so what I wanted to do actually was share this with you. Now, we did a video called Towards a Printed Generator, where I made basically the same machine, but out of aluminium. So if you want to know how this one is made, review that video, the plans are in there. This one has been made with our conductive ink. Now, obviously, you can do this with the aluminium, just like we did in the first one. But what I'm working towards is a printed version of this, one that we could just mass print. Obviously, mass printing would reduce the cost to next to nothing. Now, remember, this machine is actually made out of three layers of plastic, and that three layers have been painted. The central wheel used to look like this with petals of aluminium on them. All I've done with that central wheel is paint the ink in a line, flip it over, and paint a parallel line down the back. So there's one painted line of ink that's each strip that you can see on the wheel. And then we have these structures. On the back plate, we've got this butterfly structure, where here we've got a, the collectors here and here. And here's the inductor here and here, and they're clearly joined. Then the collectors have a bolt going through to the front plate. The front plate has a parallel connect, uh, collector version here, which is connected with that bolt to the back one, so that we effectively get a Faraday shield around this entire printed line. And the same in the other position here. And then we have this bar painted across there on the diagonal, and that's the neutralizer bar. Now, at each of these four points here, we have a hole drilled where we've put a brush. And the brush is just a strip of this stuff, carbon fibre. And that brush touches the lines on the central wheel as that central wheel rotates. So it's an electrostatic machine. The actual design is based on something by a guy called A.D. Moore, and it's called a die rod. Moore's die rod comes in two versions, a cylindrical version that looks like a drum, and this version, the radial version, that looks like a star or a sunburst being rotated between those two structures. I went for the radial version because it's just much easier to do, and what I want to do is to be able to create a structure where we would just print these discs and stack them on the same axle. And there's a reason for that, which I'm going to show you in a second. So this whole thing is made out of nothing but three bits of plastic painted with a paint. And it's important, I think, to bear that in mind, because in this, there are no coils, there are no magnets, there's no copper. It's a bit of plastic painted with a carbon ink. I just think it's awesome what this thing can do when you consider what it is. Now, I obviously made this by hand, but if you were to produce this en masse, you're talking about a device that's going to cost absolute pennies. Okay, let's have a look at this a little bit more. Now, I've got this thing set up here on the vault reading. Now, I've turned it here so the hope that you can see it. Uh, see if I can turn that backlight off. No, don't know how to. Okay, so I've got this set up here in the hope you can see it, but it was mentioned to me in previous videos if I could read the uh, readings out at the same time. So if you can see it, great, but I will be reading the readings, which is why it's just slightly awkward, because I obviously have to bend over to read it, and you probably don't get the best view of it. What I'm doing now is connecting the vault probes up to those two bolts that we looked at at the collector plates, and they're the takeoff points. Now the polarity of this depends on the direction of rotation. So if I rotate it one way, it's positive. I rotate it another, it's negative. Now at the moment, it's reading point zero zero nine of a millivolt. It kind of flickers between one millivolt and point zero zero nine millivolt, which is just the error, really. If I give that a spin by hand, you can see just gently spinning that by hand takes that up to point nine of a volt. So it's one volt there. All I'm doing is twisting that by hand and it's going up to a vault. It's generating a vault by me twisting it by hand. And see how it continues to rotate? It continues to rotate because lacking, <laughs> lacking magnets, there is no cocking, there's no back EMF, there's no torque requirement. It's astonishing when you think about it. So that will rotate very easily and generate a vault. Now, if I put a drill on it, now I'm not sure how fast I was rotating that, but I do know that this turns something like four, five hundred RPM, so we're getting that kind of turning out of it.
Well, let's spin it up. With 2.1 volts. So we get a steady 2.1 volts by turning it about 500 RPM. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, isn't it? I mean, truly, truly awesome, which is why I wanted to share it with you. Now, it's obvious to me that, I mean, a couple of volts out of this, that's pretty cool. But it's obvious to me that it is an experimental device. I mean, there's something very interesting going on here. That is absolutely for sure when you consider what this thing is. Now if we put this on the amp reading. It is an electrostatic device. And of course we've got zero because it's not spinning. If I spin that by hand, we can get quite a 0.12. Now that is a microamp reading, so it's 0.12. Now we spin it up with the drill. Point 0.3, point 0.307. Three so we can get about 0.6 of a microwatt, so about half a microwatt. Now, I know that is not a tremendous amount of power, that is certainly very true, but I think that doesn't really matter when you're looking at this. When you're thinking of this, is it a success on this or not, you're really having to look at the potential of it and what it actually is. I mean, it is a printed device on a layer of plastic that cost about 10 pence to make, but it's probably a bit more than that to make, okay? but it certainly didn't cost very much. We can certainly spin that faster and get a higher result out of it. We could certainly lay those up. I chose this design because I just like a Demos radial die rod. I am reminded very strongly of other electrostatic machines, things like Turpler's machine or Holtz's machine, and I'm sure they would work equally as well. We have a single rotating disc. It does make you wonder what would happen if we did it in the region of like a, a a pigeon machine, for instance, where we've got contra-rotating discs. There's a whole way of looking at this that we could increase that amount of power that's been generated, but not increase the cost of um, the build particularly, and certainly not include copper and magnets. So I found this actually extremely exciting, and I think it's something that's probably well worth a bit of investigation because we're able to produce real power out of something that is little more than painted plastic, which just knocks me scentless, to be honest. I just think it's awesome. So I wanted to share it with you, really, because I was asked a couple of things. Uh, one was to do something a bit more on electrostatics. The other was to do something with the ink, which we've done. Um, the, the ink, obviously, is available for sale on the shop, but you don't need to buy the ink if you don't want to. I mean, obviously, it helps me if you buy the ink, but you don't need to. You can do this out of aluminium as much as anything else. But anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you find it as fascinating as I find it. And thank you very much for watching.